Okay, I actually worked this out already and uh, I'm just going to talk you through it a little bit. But uh, what I proposed here is to repeat the previous problem uh, and that's listed below here is the problem 938. But to change this problem to, first of all, use variable specific heats, not constant specific heats. And secondly, to consider that the compression is non ideal and that the expansion is uh, non ideal. So um, I've shown uh, those uh, diagrams from the book uh, that indicate the PV diagram that we've looked at before, but also the TS diagram. I'm showing the TS diagram for the basic auto cycle. And uh, in particular, I'm, I've annotated what this change will mean for this problem because this problem is a little bit different. Rather than giving us the maximum temperature uh, T3 here, what's given in the problem is this uh, final temperature T4. And so uh, what this means is that as we did in the previous problem, we have to work backwards from the final state to find the state 3. But uh, that process is complicated significantly by this non-ideal expansion that's been proposed as part of this problem statement. So what it means is that temperature 3 needs to be determined such that when we have isentropic expansion to this same volume uh, as we have for, for volume 4, that um, that when we combine that with the isentropic efficiency that's given, 88%, that we um, that, that we then arrive to this given state 4 which is at 800 degrees K. So that's, uh, that's the approach that we will take. So the given information from the previous problem is uh, copied over here and I've added the information about the non-ideal expansion and compression. And so this process 1 to 2 is pretty straightforward even though I haven't shown these uh, alternate states here. But we're actually going to look for the state 2, not 2s. Let's put some background on that. Call the state 2s. Rather than 2. And then this state will be the actual state too. And as we've said before, that the effect of the uh, non ideal expansion will be to increase the entropy as the fluid flows through as the fluid is compressed in this process. There's no flow, of course. Okay, looks something like that. So that's the way we're going to handle the, the isentropic, uh, non isentropic conditions. All right, very good. So process uh, one to two, we're going to use the uh, relative velocity, uh, relative uh, volume for state one, and from that, we're going and the compression ratio, we're going to calculate the relative volume for state two, and so this is what it has to be if we have isentropic compression from uh, V one to V two. 
So um, once we have this V relative to, then we can calculate uh, the temperature that corresponds to that. And as I said, that's just a reverse table lookup. And we do have a function in the um, Excel add-in library that will, will do that for us. So uh, we find out that that temperature T2S is 730 degrees Kelvin. Uh, we can find the corresponding uh, U1 and U2S just by table lookup. And we've got a function for that, U1 air, U2, U air, T2S. And then the isentropic work would be uh, W1 to 2S. And then finally, we can find the actual work required for the compression as being more than the uh, initial work, the, the isentropic work. And uh, that gives us then um, three, almost 400 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. And then finally, uh, from that, yeah, this is a little bit tricky and it's worth talking about here. Uh, we don't know this temperature T2. In other words, we know T2S, we calculated that based on V relative, but we need to find the, the temperature corresponding to state 2. Well, we don't know that, but we can calculate, and we have calculated, the in, uh, internal energy that corresponds to that state. And since uh, internal energy is only a function of temperature, then we can uh, do a reverse table lookup, if you will, to find that. However, we don't have a function that gives us temperature in terms of, of U, but instead we can use this uh, goal seek feature of Excel. Suppose I don't know what this, this temperature is. I know that the T2S is 729, and that this is likely to be more. So let's just say this is uh, 750 degrees uh, K. Well, that's not the right number, because what I've done here is I've used the forward table lookup function, I can calculate, for that temperature, I can calculate the internal energy. So I've called this U2 check, the CK means check here. So what I'm wanting to do is find the T2 that gives me a value of internal energy that's the same as the known value, 617.3. So there's a function in Excel that I can use to do that. And uh, we can do that, it's on the data tab under the what if analysis drop down menu and it's called goal seek so using goal seek we can set some cell in this case u uh, b37 to a particular value what value we want that cell to have the same value as u2 so we can we can either come over here and click on it uh, i think that's fair and yeah, i guess he didn't like that uh, we're going to type it in there, 617.29. And what are we going to change to do that? We can type on this cell if we want to. We're going to change this cell called T2. So we tell them we want to change that cell until this other cell has the specified value. So pretty quickly, he says uh, about 828.9. Uh, would be the, the right answer. So that gives us uh, the temperature 2 and uh, from that then we can calculate using the ideal gas law uh, the pressure that we would have at state 2. Okay so now we know everything about state 2 and that was pretty straightforward. The problem comes on the other end of the cycle where we have the, the reverse issue. We're given a particular value of T4 that we have to find. Well, <laughs> we know that temperature, but we have to find state 3 such that when we have non-isentropic expansion uh, from that state 3 that we hit that state 4. So that, that's kind of the the deal here. We need to find state 3 so that when we use the given isentropic expansion we land at state 4. So we can set this up um, in Excel and, and use that same goal seek to, to help us solve it because this is a, an iterative process. If you solve this by hand 
you have to use a, a guess and check type of uh, solution. So uh, let, let's see how it goes. From the given temperature T4, we can calculate uh, U4. However, we don't know this temperature 3. And as I said, let's uh, assume that it's, I don't know, 800 degrees K. We don't, we don't know. But we know it's more than 828, which is what T2 was. Let's assume it's 1,200. Just, just something reasonable is all we need. So based on that guess, I mean, then we just work this out as if we know that temperature. We assume that that's the correct temperature, and we just go through the steps that we would go through to calculate T4. So the idea is, just like you would do by hand, you would assume a value for T3, go through the calculations, calculate a T4, and then find out does that does that match what it's supposed to be or or not? And in this case, we don't have to compare it to T4. We can just compare it to to the U4 that we know what it what it's supposed to be. So uh, let's see how this works. So we guessed a T3. That means we can calculate the corresponding U3, and based on that, we can calculate the actual work required for the compression. Uh, excuse me, that's done in the expansion from 3 to 4. So uh, there's a number for that. It's just U3 minus U4. And um, we can also, based on that assumed T3, find the ideal expansion uh, using the V relative uh, functions. In other words, we can calculate the VR3, assuming that that's the right T3. And based on that, we can calculate V4 using the compression ratio. So that's what that would have to be. And then finally, uh, using the reverse table lookup, the T V relative based on T air uh, is going to, that, that gives us a number for uh, the T4S. So knowing T4S, we can calculate the corresponding in, uh, internal energy. And then we could also calculate the corresponding um, ideal work. So here's the deal. We, we've assumed a T3. We've calculated what the corresponding isentropic state is. And we, we know what the internal energy at state 4 is supposed to be. So we can use that known internal energy with the assumed state 3 and the ideal work that's associated with the expansion from that state 3. And we can calculate the isentropic efficiency. And if that, that isentropic efficiency has to equal the isentropic efficiency that we were given. In other words, the 88%. So um, calculated the ideal work, and I've calculated the isentropic work. That ratio is the isentropic efficiency. And as I said, that's not terribly close. Let's, we could make even a, a worse guess. Let's say it was 1,000 degrees K. This number is supposed to be 0.88. We've got 0.78. But we can use the goal seek to, to set this cell equal to the value that it's supposed to be. So we can do that. Let's do that now. We go to the data tab. We go under the what if analysis, find the goal seek, and we want to set that cell equal to what value? It's supposed to have a value of 0 0.88. And to get that value, we're going to change this cell, which one? T3. We want to change T3 until this value is equal to 0.88. So uh, again, very quickly, goal seek is able to tell us the answer is. Uh, you wanted 0.88, I got 0.87995, how's that? And that's close enough. Tells us that that temperature, T3, has to be 1356. Okay, so well, now we know all the temperatures in the cycle, and that's all we really know to need to know to solve everything. But um, they also ask us in this problem to find uh, the pressure at state 3. And we can do that uh, going back to the process 2 to 3 that was constant volume. And we can find the corresponding pressure 
Uh, here we have 4180 uh, kilopascals. So uh, the rest of the information that he's asked for here is pretty straightforward. Uh, what's the amount of heat transferred in and what's the thermal efficiency? Uh, let's see if we can't, can't throw that stuff down pretty quickly. QH will be equal to the mass of the air and apparently I haven't calculated that here. I thought I did but it's the same as it was in the previous problem so if he uses that previous value that doesn't hurt us. Mass of the air times um, U3 minus U2 And that's kilojoules per cycle, if you will. And then the network. Well, I think we've got all of that. We just need to subtract it out. This is the work from um, 3 to 4. I guess we need it with the mass multiplied in here. This is the work from three to four. I'm getting a little dizzy here, I guess. Minus the work from one to two. There we go. So that's the net work. There's only work done during those two parts of the process, those parts of the cycle. And finally, the thermal efficiency Thermal efficiency is just going to be equal to that network divided by QH. I'm getting a pretty big number for that. Let's see where I went wrong. We can check it. Yep, I'm getting 61%. So anyway, um, there you have it. Uh, we added some irreversibility to the cycle and uh, calculated the uh, performance. And we've come up with 61.9%. Uh,